What's up guys? I am standing here in front of some trees that you see in a lot of the backgrounds of my videos. Most of you probably know that they're mangroves. Some of you may not know that these are red mangroves. There are different species of mangroves. These here are the most common. Red mangroves are mostly what you see out there. You can easily tell red mangroves because of the shapes of the roots. Here you have a clear example where the root systems kind of curve and, and stretch in these intricate patterns. The other two main types of mangroves, white and black, have a different type of root system. But one other way that you'll be able to tell that it is indeed a red mangrove is that it's going to be down near the shoreline and it's going to have these string bean shape pods that hang down from them that can be pretty long. Only mangrove trees have this type of pod. The black mangroves are going to have little tiny ones, about an inch long. But they're all the same in that when it falls from the tree, it's fully mature and can survive on its own without having to be pollinated or whatever you call that. It's pretty neat. One key to the mangrove's success is its salt tolerance. In these pictures here, you can see the black mangrove actually sweating salt out of its leaves. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get on land here because once we get a little bit higher, we'll see the different types of mangroves. Watch out. Wow. Okay. Now I'm coming up on some higher ground. And over here, we're likely to see the type of mangrove that you're probably not going to see if you're paddling because they like higher ground and they're a little bit further inland. That would be the white mangrove. White mangroves are actually very similar to red and black as far as the, the shape of their leaves and stuff. Um, but again, they like the, the land that's a little more high and dry and their root systems look like that of a tree, not like a, a mangrove, what you traditionally think of as a mangrove with the curving, reaching legs kind of sort of. A white mangrove really is more like a regular tree. <laughs> Boy, there's a lot of bugs back here. <laughs> Here's a good example of the difference between red mangroves, and you can see those arcing shapes, versus black mangroves. Now look at the lighter color of those trees versus these trees. These have a darkish color to the bark, and you can see the way they come up out of the water is kind of straight. The tide's up right now, otherwise I could show you examples of the little fingers that come out of the mud when you are close to black mangroves. I think I have some old stock footage, actually. I think there were some crabs over here. In this footage, back from about 2010, I'm coming up on a beach chasing crabs. I saw them disappearing inside these little root systems. Those are root systems from black mangroves, and they're called pneumatophores. They allow the trees to breathe when the roots are submerged, and they also make good homes for crabs. These little roots sticking up are a dead giveaway that it's a black mangrove instead of a red mangrove which has prop roots. So that's pretty cool. There's a difference, you know, we're in the same area here where you have black mangroves and red mangroves. And now you'll be able to tell the difference just by looking at the root system. The amazing thing about these plants is that they are taking care of the environment for us. They're breaking the waves. They're holding the land together. Like down here, you can see a maze of mangrove roots. It's pretty difficult to see here, but the land drops off about seven feet before it's at the bottom of the river. Such a sheer face like this makes these roots very important. Those mangrove roots are actually holding back the land from collapsing and eroding. If you look up here on the back side of the property, I've pulled out some of the weeds and such and it revealed all these rocks, but all of this dirt and all of this land would be eroding into the sea were it not for these 
mangrove plants. So thank you for keeping this place intact. And in one of my recent videos, you saw that I built a kayak launch. These mangrove seeds that are coming off of those trees are constantly getting caught in here. This, this one doesn't seem to be faring too well. But uh, the other day, I noticed that some of them are sprouting roots. Yeah, this one has a root. It must be that time of year. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm collecting some of these and we're gonna go ahead and plant them. The reason I got the idea to do this is because this one washed up the other day and it was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. A mangrove baby. Look at how cool that is. Already has well-established roots, little hairs on them and everything. A couple little leaves. I mean, <laughs> that looks like something that uh, you'd see on Waterworld or something, you know, where he would covet this and take it to a new place and start a whole new line of <laughs> mangroves. Anyways, um, I've got them in this bucket and I'm going to put them up there and plant them uh, because I respect these trees and thought I would share a little bit about mangroves with you guys. In a lot of my videos, of course, I would love to catch big redfish or snook or trout and just be out there kayak fishing. But sometimes the fishing's tough and I didn't want to ignore the things in the background, like these trees. I really do think these trees are cool. Planting them here was going to fill a bald spot and keep the land from eroding. I mean, it's all good stuff. And it's good to know the environment of the fish that you're hunting. Inside the root systems of red mangroves hide all kinds of creatures. Some can be used for bait, and some are the type that you want to catch. Very close to where my rental business is, there are mangrove tunnels. And I don't think there's a better, more intimate way to get to see mangroves. It always brings a smile to my face when I'm inside here. This particular day, I had a guy who came from a long way to come and hang out. Both of us were in Catch 130s, just cruising through. Even though we had foot pedals, there was still enough water, mostly, to get through these tunnels. As long as you watched your head and kept your eyes open, you might look around and see some pretty cool wildlife inside here. There were birds in the trees, crabs crawling all over the place. And even though it was a very windy day, inside the tunnels you felt very protected. It wasn't too claustrophobic either, because every once in a while you would break out into an opening. Just enough to feel the sun shining down on you. Whenever I get an opportunity, I'll grab a kayak and go over here and check these places out. It's really neat to be under such a beautiful canopy. And I'm fortunate to have mangrove tunnels near me that are really long and fun to explore. This one here curves around for almost a half a mile before it opens up into a little lake. I always knew that when I emerged into this little lake, I had made it to the end of this particular tunnel. It always feels like quite an accomplishment. Every once in a while you'll see fish in here too. And it's not that far from home. I strongly encourage anybody who has an opportunity to check these places out. Sometimes you don't even need a paddle. You can just pull yourself along. <laughs> sometimes you can pedal, sometimes paddle. But there's always usually something really beautiful to see. On those days when the fish aren't biting, I know I always have the mangrove tunnels.
These mangrove tunnels are a lot of fun. I just really enjoy coming through here, and of course you guys are welcome to come here and do it too. And I also wanted you uh, to see something else pretty cool about mangroves. Check it out. Well, I have just fast forwarded about six months and the winter is now gone. The spring is just about behind us. We're about to get into summer. The growing season is definitely upon us. Some things have changed. I've added a little bit back here. You can see it's a lot greener. And what's kind of neat is over here, you can see my uh, mangrove babies are starting to take. Looks like these guys back here are doing okay. And this guy is that big one that you saw that had the roots, the water world tree. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It is, uh, it is neat to know that you can just grab one of those little floating string beans, stick it in the ground, and have it grow. And I kind of got the idea for doing this from a friend of mine who claimed once that on a sandbar he took one of these seedlings and stuck it in the ground and it started to propagate like right out in the middle of the flats and uh, we kind of joked that someday if it ever turned into its own little island we would name it Steve Key in his honor so uh, <laughs> thank you Steve for the inspiration hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video maybe you learned something about mangroves and or perhaps have a new appreciation for these trees that are in the backgrounds of so many videos thank you guys for watching I will check you out later Thank you.